Hey everyone, this is Cody from San Diego's first and longest running local beer podcast, Beer Night in San Diego. If you love the local beer community, check out Beer Night in San Diego, available everywhere podcasts are found. Each and every week we bring you great local beer discussion, beer education, news, and tons more with a touch of comedy. Check out Beer Night in San Diego to laugh and learn with us. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast, Season 2 Edition. Today's episode features a conversation with the founder and operator of Crowbeard Coffee, Stephen Crocker. Stephen's coffee roastery got its start in the OC, but he and the company moved back to Encinitas last year. Crowbeard is a true coffee startup and a one-man show. Anyone who dreams of being an entrepreneur learns very quickly that you rarely get to do just the one thing that you love. In Stephen's case, he loves roasting coffee, but with Crowbeard, he's also the web designer, the salesman, the graphic designer, and the repairman. Often, entrepreneurs learn on the fly, and it isn't for the faint of heart. And I shouldn't imply that Stephen is entirely alone. Freya the Cat is on the team, and he has his family offering to pitch in. I have also leaned on my family to start businesses, whether for a loan, a hand, or just moral support, and it is a luxury I definitely don't take for granted. While you're listening, if you want to get a jump on ordering some coffee today, check out the shop on crowbeardcoffee.com, and we'll get to that interview in just a moment. But first, I want to admit something to you, something that a few years ago I might have been a little embarrassed about. Unnecessarily so, but still. Now I say this loudly and with pride. I like birds. In fact, I own more than one bird book. I have a pair of binoculars, and I subscribe to Bird Note Podcasts. They just put up a short episode talking about how shade-grown coffee is better for bird habitats. I'm going to play a clip from the recent episode titled Tanagers, Coffee Birds, What Do Migratory Birds and Your Latte Have in Common? But before I do, I want to make sure that you understand I have no paid promotions with Bird Note. I just really like this podcast, and this episode specifically talks about how the lives of birds and our coffee intermingle. This is Bird Note. Are you enjoying a nice cup of morning coffee? These songbirds, the western tanager and the scarlet tanager and your latte have a connection you may not have realized. Each spring, these tanagers arrive after a long journey from Mexico and Central America. To us, spending the winter in Mexico may seem a glorious vacation, but the tanagers must labor continually to find suitable habitat with plenty of fruits, berries, and insects. Much of their prime wintering habitat has been turned into coffee plantations. How you doing? Good. Uh, get for it? Single coffee, eating it with one sugar. When coffee plantations employ traditional methods of growing coffee bushes under a tall canopy of trees, tanagers can enjoy a food-filled winter home. And you can rest easy with a delicious cup of shade-grown brew. But where the tall, shade-giving trees have been cut down to grow coffee in the direct sunlight, what is also removed is the habitat tanagers require to rest and feed. To be sure the tanagers continue to return for the summer, consider reaching for shade-grown coffee. It's satisfying to know that even a simple change in habits can have a positive impact on birds. A shout out to Francis Wood, who wrote that episode, and to Michael Stein, who narrates Bird Note. I love that show. Shade Grown Coffee, which is also called Bird Friendly Coffee, is very popular in Brazil, where there are often clashes between coffee plantation owners and those keen to preserve and protect the rainforests. Bird Friendly Coffees are grown amongst the plants and trees that are native to the area in an effort to enable producers to continue growing coffee while also conserving the native species and preventing damage to forests. I'm going to share a link to the Bird Note Show and a bunch of extra details about shade-grown coffee in the Roast West Coast newsletter, which you can read at roastwestcoast.com. If you want to get this podcast and the newsletter sent to you for free every single time it drops, just enter your email in the box that says enter email. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
If you want even more coffee content, Roast West Coast now has dedicated social media. Follow at Roast West Coast on Instagram. And if you want to do more than just look at the pictures and listen to this show, join the Roast West Coast Coffee Group on Facebook to talk about coffee with other coffee lovers and even some of the coffee pros that appear on this show. It is a small group, but it is growing. I hope to see you there soon. Right now, grab a latte, an espresso, a cappuccino, a... You get the point. Grab a coffee, because it's time for the interview with Stephen Crocker, founder of Crowbeard Coffee. Well, let's get into it. Uh, Stephen Crocker of Crowbeard Coffee, welcome to the Roast West Coast podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. I actually have a, a cup of coffee here, a French press that uh, made from some beans that you were kind enough to drop off. Can you tell me what I'm drinking here? Yeah, that's the San Jacinta Tipica. Sorry, my cats are kind of uh, <laughs> in the way here. The uh, Honduran, it's Honduran, and it's uh, a San Jacinta Tipica, the varietal. And um, that's the region, sorry. And... Yeah, that one, I'm pretty sure that one's, um, you know, blueberry, honeydew, and I think I want to say chocolate. Let's go, let's go check. Oh, it's fresh cocoa. Fresh cocoa. That's what I will look for then. Honeydew, blueberry, fresh cocoa. Yeah, and it's uh, from La Paz. It's natural, and you know, you know, you probably know the difference between natural and dry I do. And uh, for anyone listening, we actually did a whole like Coffee Smarter series on it, which I'll link to in this show, and they can go through and learn learn all the details on that. Oh, cool, yeah. I've listened to a few of your shows. They're great. Oh, well, thank you. I'm definitely going to keep that in. I promise you I won't cut that. Let's move on. What? Let's just start with something easy. Where does the name Crowbeard come from? Well, it comes from me. I, you know, was trying to think of a trying to think of an original name, and in my family crest has three crows around the shield. I kind of thought of that. And, um, you know, beards seem to be, you know, becoming more and more popular these days. So I I figured there's going to be all sorts of Google hits about how do I do my beard right? You know, maybe Crowbeard would pop up there somewhere and then they'd be able to get their coffee right too. So I put those words together. I was like, kind of sounds like a pirate. It's kind of a cool name, Crowbeard. And I, and I ran with it and, um, I got really pretty good reception. Most people seem to really like it. Everyone had questions. A lot of people are, are hearing crow beer. <laughs> that's from my own fault. I, I tend to mumble at times. So, yeah, that's how I got the name. Well, that's kind of cool. And you've got a, a big crow. On, I mean, the kind of the crow imagery is very cool, too. Crows are very smart birds in general. They are. They're extremely intelligent. I swear that they're like the crows that live in, we're, I'm in Carlsbad Village and I swear the crows here like know me as a person when I walk around, like they're, they're watching and waiting for their opportunity probably to steal my coffee. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Supposedly they, they remember faces. So, you know, they, they'll remember that good coffee coming out. Interesting. So what was your kind of your first experience with coffee that took it from something that was just something you had for breakfast in the morning to something you wanted to actually do what what inspired you to start roasting coffee and uh kind of became the origin of of crowbeard coffee um i like how you said breakfast there have been many days where coffee was just my breakfast and uh and i've been completely happy with that you know I'd, I'd grown up drinking coffee boys loved it and it got to a point where I was having some medical issues, so I was having trouble working. And I came across this roaster in Orange County, and he had these two old roasters up on the wall that I had noticed he had been using just a couple weeks ago. He had gotten some new roasters in. I was like, you know, how much can I get for one of those? You know, are they working, you know? And um, he goes, sure, you know, throw me a price. So I came back a few weeks later with a price. A really, you know, for eight hundred dollars, I was able to get a four thousand dollar roaster. So at the time, he also told me it worked. Um, it turns out <laughs> the roaster didn't work. So I now know all about how to fix the roaster as well. You know, the new RAM module I had to put in, a new blower motor. Uh, what else? Um, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that you can pull that roaster apart and put it back together. 
It's ab absolutely. Now I know what's going on with it. When I hear a noise or why is that pressure happening like that, I know where to look and fiddle around with and when the time to call is. The the roaster you're talking about, I think I read it's a, a Sono Fresco kind of small batch hot air roaster. How is that different from, say, a traditional like big drum roaster? Well, it's a um, two pound roaster and it it's basically in this little ceramic chamber I set into the machine and What's really cool about this roaster is you can see the roast being done from beginning to end, which makes it a lot easier to tell where your coffee's at when you want to switch it up, stop it. And um, it made it a lot easier for me to learn because I had never roasted coffee before buying that machine. I, it had always been an interest of me, you know, of mine. And I took it and ran with it. I like to meditate um, when I have a big decision, meditate slash pray, and it just felt right. And I you know, it was low on money, but I did it, grabbed it, and I started learning how to roast. And within, so let me tell you a little bit more about that machine. It, it uh, it's basically just shoots a hot jet of hot air below the coffee chamber. It's like a giant hair dryer. So it's heating the coffee and blowing it around this chamber to where it's heating through convection through the air only. For most, yeah, air only. It's not really touching the bottom of this thing. It's blowing so hard. So it roasts differently. It roasts a lot cleaner because you're getting all that extra chaff and stuff blowing right out of the machine. All those extra dirt particles and other particles roasters know that will get in the coffee from time to time. That stuff blows right on out, makes it a lot safer, and it makes for one killer cup of coffee. You had mentioned you had had some medical issues, which I'm assuming meant that you were at home a little bit more. Yeah. So just to go back so I don't forget to, to close the loop on it, how did you get into coffee in the first place? You said you were doing it from from a, from you were a kid, but was that just kind of always something that was around, or what what turned it into something you were more interested in? Well, I always wanted to own my own business, and I always wanted to start my own business, and that mixed with a passion for coffee and knowing that I've missed a lot of opportunities. <laughs> the hindsight is perfect, but I know going forward that when something comes along like this and you feel it's right, you should you should go for it, and uh, I did, and. Um, it's been a really cool, really cool ride. Things are slowly starting. It's, it, it's, it's been a ride, ups and downs, you know, and I, I started this right. I had been practicing roasting the coffee up until I wanted to start the business a month before the coronavirus hit. And so, yeah, it, it was really interesting start i did i started it on that day and just went for it turns out like i i wish i had the money to market at the time because you know the online coffee sales were just shooting way up it would have been great to be able to capitalize on that but i just uh i lived in a condo up in uh, dana point at the time and south orange county and i would talk to my neighbors i had them try out a lot of these coffees as i went they were my testers and um which they had no problems with and uh <laughs> Soon enough, they were buying the coffees, and that was real cool. And I started to get a base of people buying that coffee up there, and then I had to make a move back down to Encinitas due to some financial things. So now I'm back down here, able to roast. Well, I think something that people don't think a lot about is the sacrifices that entrepreneurs make in general. And I know for myself, you're always kind of choosing between safety and stability and, and finding a job and also going for that thing that you're passionate about. People think, oh, you open the business and that's the end of that struggle. But the reality is, is you're always going through that struggle for years yeah. and years. And even after you've been successful, you remember that stress of what it felt like to not be sure. And so you're always striving. Yeah. And it sounds to me like you're right in the meat of that now. Yeah. Yeah. So you're about a year in. I mean, the coronavirus has, has been around a year. What's your kind of your plan for the next for the next coming year? You know, as we are hopefully, let's hypothetically say that we're sliding out of this coronavirus phase, uh -huh. things are slowly opening up. What are you planning on doing with Crowbeard? I'd like to talk to a few more coffee shops out there about possibly getting my brand into one of their shops. I don't know why there aren't more shops that carry. I get it. They're so competitive, but it would be cool if there were some coffee shops out there that carried, you know, the local, hey, come to our shop. We have the best coffees in North County. You could pick which one, you know. I'd love to see some shops like that or at least start going that way. I think it'd help each other out a lot. And then uh, I have a new website being worked on and that should be coming through the pipelines hopefully in the next week or two. So I'm the only one working at this company. 
So I had to learn how to build a website. I learned it through YouTube and I got it done. And it was very stressful at times, but it happened. And um, so I, I love my website, but I think I have maybe an unhealthy attachment with it just because you know, it was my baby and it was so difficult to you know make that site. We have a new one coming through that's a little bit more professional. Well, a lot more professional. And um, I don't know if Freya is going to be on this one with the CEO tag under it. <laughs> I hope so. Freya is my favorite part of the website. You know, I, I'm going to try to make it happen, but I will, we'll see. <laughs> so I was going to ask, Freya is your cat. What does Freya, yeah. what does Freya actually do besides moral support? Or is that essentially, and, and she's a cat. So how much moral support is there really? You know, 10 claws worth. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, she's been great. This cat's been great. And, and, I, and especially having to move and kind of connect, reconnect with the community. It's great having a little pal roaming around. I used to have a, a dog, but the size of my properties recently haven't allowed it. I don't want to, you know, it's cool. Some people are able to get out with their large dogs enough to have them in these smaller spots, but I, I, I'm not really in that position. So I, I love dogs and cats equally, but these cats have been great. I have one. The other one's my, my dad. My dad has this huge property and he has a couple guest house. And I'm, I've been lucky enough for him to be helping me out with this. I've had my mom help me out a little bit too. So family has been great with all this. You know, I could see Crowbeard, the name is starting to get out there. People are starting to talk about it. Next step, people got to start buying a little bit more. They're buying it, just not. A, I, of course, it's you know the first year. I'm hoping to continue that that rise. That's that entrepreneur, you know, spirit. It's never fast enough, and and you really have to step back to say, well, look how far I've come. But in the moment, it's really hard to see it because you're thinking about the next thing. Absolutely, that's a very difficult thing, and it has been a difficult thing for me to do over my lifetime. I've certainly had a practice and have still practice, just trying to stay in the moment you know what have you done where are, where are you now and what can you do you know for that future you'd want it seems like a lot of people are coming around to that idea of in the moment covid certainly i think inspired some of this to be more aware of ourselves and i know one of my my new year's goals was to meditate more often which wasn't something that i'm very good at my brother is an active meditator so i've been inspired by him I really have to stick to shorter lengths of time or I'll get distracted by, you know, the buzzing of a fly or yeah. some thought bouncing around in my brain. But it does seem to help even momentarily. And, and coffee, to me, is a real type of active meditation. Uh -huh. You know, the process of making it takes me about five, six minutes. The, the sitting with a cup of coffee takes me another half hour or so. Yeah. And that's time where I'm really able to focus. I agree. I agree. Especially early in the morning, my first cup of coffee, I go out in the yard and just sit there for about an hour thinking about, you know, my day and just relaxing and, you know, going through periods of just not thinking about a thing, just trying to get into motion. You have a statement I want to read on your website that says, uh, the coffee roasters of the world can make a real and direct positive influence on a coffee farmer's lives which in turn directly affect his or her family, friends, community, and country. Small acts of compassion have a way of affecting more than some would initially realize. I read that and I was, I was assuming it's in part about how you're choosing to source your coffee beans. I read that they're organic, but as a, a relatively small startup local roaster, how did you kind of go about that process of figuring out how to source beans and find beans that met the standard that you're setting for yourselves and, and determining who to work with? It just feels like it's a daunting kind of effort. I got really, really lucky. I got really lucky finding someone pretty quick. Um, now, I'm sure there are other places I could go for better prices online. That's something I didn't want to do, especially early on. I need to know. One thing, I, w I want my coffee to be the best possible taste in coffee out there. I want us as a company to do the best we can. And I think that that will like translate into other avenues as well. And it will translate certainly into the coffee. So I found this place, someone told me about this place called Bodhi Leaf. They have a few locations in um, one in Orange. And the Orange location has a giant warehouse of green beans, green coffee beans. And I'd say there's I want to guess around 30 different types to choose from. But this guy, Steve, who owns the company, he goes around the world talking to these farmers, sourcing them and, and coming back to his, that that's his company. You should actually check that uh, website out. He's a, it seems like a, 
he it seems like he's given back to the farmer a lot too um and finding the right people he does tea as well right i feel like i've heard this name oh yeah yeah he does he does have tea in there um i've never i haven't tried the tea yet have you tried the coffee to leave or the fruit tea if it is the person that i think it is then yes i have but i I need to check to be sure off the top of my head i can't remember what made you decide to trust bodhi leaf in the first place and steve i talked to the employees i looked at their website i looked at what people had to say about them i had bought the coffee and tried the coffee and it was phenomenal coffee and you're also able to i mean he puts you know, where, what region they're from and the variety and all the information. And if you were to ask which farm he got this stuff from, he'd be able to tell you. Your website also mentions a passion for animals. And obviously we've got Freya here uh, leading operations yeah. <laughs> and you have a kind of a plan to support animal related efforts when your company starts taking off. Yeah. How has that plan progressed? Have you come up with any plans since that was written on the website or do you have an idea of what uh, that, that interaction will be? Yeah, I'd like to find I'd like to find one. I haven't decided on the type of humane society. There are different types. They're like there are kill shelters and no kill shelters, and which would improve the animals' lives the most. I'm still trying to figure it out. Obviously, you know, you get some dogs off the the kill line that saves their lives, but where are they going from there? I, I need to learn a little bit more about that aspect of it because I've looked into the humane societies and. I I would love to be able to donate a certain percentage each month to one of these societies and get in there and help wherever I can myself with myself going in there and helping. And uh, as we get bigger, I'd like to, well, that's way, way down the line. (laughs) That's all right. Aspiration is uh, the key to success, right? Yeah. I'd like to one day as this company grows to actually sponsor and start our own humane society i think that'd be wonderful that's one of my dreams as well i've always loved animals and uh they've really uh helped me along at times in my life and uh yeah i I probably wouldn't be here without them (laughs) i think that's something a lot of people relate to i mean in the early days of the pandemic and you were seeing humane societies that had run out of animals for the first time and yeah people really started to put value on their relationships with animals because they were a source of comfort and companionship at a time when we all really needed it and in some cases you know i'm i was quarantined or i'm here with with my wife you know, having a, a dog or a cat around is it's kind of nice to have someone else to talk to besides the person. Yeah, you're with <laughs> yeah I am talking to her. Yeah, you, you find yourself doing that. I used to make fun of uh, an uncle I had who would talk to his dog, and and I think about a week after we got our first our first dog, I was having full on conversations yeah. with it. So I understand that. So here's a question that I ask everyone that I I talk to about coffee, which is, if you are not going to have a cup of your own coffee. What kind of coffee, what kind of style are you drinking outside of, of your work if you were just to go stop by a local coffee shop uh, or roastery in town? Well, after listening to one of your podcasts, I actually think they may have tried my coffee at one point, <laughs> and I didn't hear back. <laughs> there were these two gals in Carlsbad. Now, you know what? I must be thinking of a different shop um, that I sent my stuff to, but um, these two gals in Carlsbad, who started their own, it's kind of a unique name. Mostra Coffee? Mostra. And one of them's from Peru, or was it? Philippines. Philippines, sorry. And how they were doing some business over in the Philippines, and how they kind of grew their business over here, and how they're giving out you know, grants and doing a bunch of good stuff for people around. I, I really liked what they had to say, and it sounded like they have their coffee down. And that, that would be my next stop if I wanted to try a cup, I'd say. And when you do go there, is it going to be just a cup of black coffee? Are you getting an espresso? I mean, what's your what's your go-to? I get a regular coffee, a real coffee here. So yeah, I'd get a regular coffee, and I'd probably just add a little bit of milk. A little bit of milk. What about anything else we didn't cover about, about Crowbeard? Anything you would want listeners to know? And then let me, you know, how can people order it to get it for themselves? Check out my website, um, www.crowbeard.com. You could find anything you need to know on there. It'll have all the current coffees we have and um, all the details. You could get a hold of me via email or through my cell phone. Contact information is all there. Again, our coffee is 100% guaranteed. So if you don't like our coffee, we'll either give you your money back or give you another bag of coffee too. So we've got a pretty sweet operation going on here. And um, 
I know with the right moves, and um, I believe um, we're going the right way. So I'm, I'm excited to grow this company. Well, it sounds like you have kind of a lot of, of little areas and little niche concepts going on where you are, you're small, you're local, your family, you know, you, you mentioned your mom and dad have helped out. So you're, you're a family run business. Yeah. And then of course, you know, the, you've got Freya the cat who is uh, your, your North star. Oh, and we ro- we roast to order too. We roast to order. Roast to order in two pound batches. So that's a good thing. I do order coffee in two pound batches sometimes. Even I struggle to get through it and I drink a lot of coffee because you want to yeah. drink it when it's fresh and it's the best and, you know, when it's in that right window. And there is an expiration date on when coffee is going to taste good the same way with a with an IPA. You know, after so many days, it's not going to taste the same way it did at the beginning. So, yeah. Well, I, I will tell you that the, uh, which you kind of hinted at already, um, but yeah, the coffee is not the best, you know, day one. It's the best at, you know, day three or four. And, the following week or two, you're going to have a, I'd say the following week, at least great cups of coffee. And then that's when it starts. Like if you have a dark cup of coffee, um, I don't mind it, but some people are really picky when you get the dark cups of coffee and you have it, you don't drink your, your coffee quick enough. It's going to start to develop the oils on the beans, the CO2 hitting the oxygen on the outside of the beans, causing that oil to be created. And it's got this like glimmer sheen to the bean. You know, like someone colossed them, which is great for pictures. But. <laughs> well, it's always interesting once you start learning about that to go back to, you know, like a grocery store that sells bulk coffee and just start looking at the different beans and seeing what they look like yeah. compared to the beans you get from your local roaster. Anything else that I should know? Other than, you know, it's the best cup of coffee you could pros- probably buy. <laughs> I sh- probably should have said that sentence correctly. I would have probably. <laughs> I think people will. I think people will understand and appreciate that you're you're more focused on the coffee than the sentence. <laughs> no, I just uh, I appreciate you having me on your show. I love what you're doing, and uh, I'm certainly a fan. And I'm going to keep uh, listening. Well, I appreciate that too. Uh, it was nice having a, a cup of coffee with you this morning, and congratulations to us both because this is the first uh, recording of season two so people will uh will break them in and, and get them through a whole nother okay good i was the first one so the second guy has a real easy easy he's been having an easy breezy time <laughs> steven real nice to meet you and uh, hope you have a great day you too man enjoy the coffee that is the end of my interview with steven crocker of crowbeard coffee but i still have more to say First, I want to remind you to follow the Voice of San Diego podcast. It is the San Diego region's most popular public affairs and politics podcast. Every Friday, hosts Scott Lewis, Andy Keats, and Sarah Libby break down the biggest local news and moves in San Diego politics. It's a must-listen for local news nerds. You can find the Voice of San Diego podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Back to Roast West Coast. Every week in the newsletter, I've been including new coffee terms and vocabulary words. I've decided to start keeping that trend here on the show for those of you who are listening. The very first random coffee term today is microfoam. Microfoam is the appearance of the very tiny bubbles on the top of a properly frothed milk. Microfoam is what latte art is made out of. And I do have to ask, what is up with the word frothed? It's a weird word. Whenever I say it, my brain repeats it internally in kind of a very stuffy British accent, in which I am absolutely not going to do here. Frothed. Nope, not going to do it. The second coffee vocab word today is tamper. A tamper is usually a heavy, stainless steel device, which baristas use to press the coffee grounds firmly into the portafilter when preparing to brew an espresso shot. That is it for today's episode. I couldn't have done it without all of you listening. I want to shout out at Hotel Paris, Paris with two R's on Instagram, for totally making my night on Saturday by letting me know that he was binging on the show and to Tom Roshar for becoming a paid subscriber of the newsletter. I used the proceeds from Tom's subscription to buy more coffee. Or was it whiskey? I don't remember. I also need to thank my industry legacy partners at Zumbar Coffee and Tea, Leap Coffee, Steady State Roasting, Morea Coffee, Moster Coffee, Cafe La Terre, First Light Whiskey, and Cape Horn Coffee Importers. I just got a bag of Mostra's Brazil Roast called Oberon that I'm very excited to dig into. And check back on Friday when I share First Light Whiskey's chocolate coffee cake recipe. Before I go, a huge thank you to Stephen Crocker for coming on the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast right now at this very moment. 
you can order small batch roasted, organic, fair trade coffees from the Crowbeard web store at crowbeardcoffee.com, which he swears will make your taste buds dance. It says so right on the website. And head to at Crowbeard Coffee on Instagram to get more Freya the Cat in your life. Thank you all for listening to this episode and being excited for the upcoming episodes of the Roast West Coast podcast. I'll be back on Friday with a brand new Coffee Smarter episode with our resident coffee expert, Chris O'Brien of Coffee Cycle. He and I are going to dig into the impact of technology on your espresso shots. And in a few weeks, Siri Simran Kulsa, the executive director and head coffee roaster at Lofty Coffee, will be joining this show as our resident roaster expert. I can't wait for that. Please share Roast West Coast with all of your coffee-loving friends. Tell them to search for Roast West Coast. How many times can I say Roast West Coast in a paragraph? On any of the major podcasting platforms, including Apple and Spotify. Or better yet, just tell them to sign up for that newsletter at RoastWestCoast.com, and I'll send it to them in an email every Tuesday and Friday. Tag the show at Roast West Coast on Instagram, or join that Roast West Coast Facebook group and start a new coffee conversation. Links to all of that stuff is in this episode's show notes. Finally, if you find yourself desiring some good coffee, please support your local coffee roasters and coffee shops. I'm going to walk down the street to drink a cup of that Mosher coffee in the park, and I'm going to bring my binoculars today and my brew book. This episode of the Roast West Coast podcast has been produced and recorded by me, Ryan Wolt. I hope this show has found you happy, healthy, and with at least enough sanity to make it through the day. And please, always be sure to drink good coffee.